Okay, welcome to another Orbiter Space Flight Simulator video. And in this video, I'm taking, I took the Shuttle A from the moon, from the uh, Brighton Beach, brought it back to the Earth. And when I started off, the Shuttle A had cargo attached to it. You can see currently it's empty because I've already jettisoned all the cargo at this point. This particular mission is a default mission. It comes with Orbiter 2010. The scenario is located in the Shuttle A folder, and it is called Shuttle A on the Moon. According to the description for this particular scenario, it says that basically uh, your mission is to take the cargo back to the Earth, dump it into the Indian Ocean, and then return the Shuttle A back to the Moon. Well, at the very least, I'm bringing the cargo back to Earth. I don't know that I'll necessarily do the return trip, but um, well, I'm bringing the cargo back. I did decide to dump the cargo off the coast of Florida instead. At least that's my stated goal at the beginning of this flight. Turned out that wasn't necessarily the greatest idea in the world, though, because when I did that, uh, due to the positioning and everything, there was an issue where when I did the burn to bring the Shuttle A back to the Earth, I was actually sent it, uh, the, it had so much inward on the burn that it wanted to crash the Shuttle A into the moon. And I thought it was going to be a complete failure. But as I looked at the periapsis at the moon, it turned out that we were only going to skim the moon by just a little bit. So I went ahead and brought the altitude up enough so that I wouldn't crash into the moon and then continued on with the flight. If it had been the case that my periapsis at the moon had been like a thousand kilometers below the surface or something, then I probably just would have scrapped the flight and started over. But uh, I was able to recover from it. And in the last, uh, in the last video, I brought uh, the, the shuttle A and the cargo most of the way back to the Earth. About halfway in, about halfway back when I reached the sphere of influence of Earth, I dumped the cargo so that it would continue on its trajectory, which sends it into the Earth's atmosphere so that it will slow down and eventually, you know, fall into the ocean. Uh, once I jettisoned the once I jettisoned the cargo, I put the Shuttle A on a new trajectory so that it would not hit the atmosphere because obviously this thing is not built for atmospheric flight. So I have two things I need to do here in this part. Um, number one, I want to check in on the cargo to see how it's doing. And then number two, I need to set up a maneuver so that the Shuttle A uh, will reinsert itself into Earth orbit. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here and get on with it. Before we get too far in, let's just check in on our cargo. So control F3, and you can see we've got all six pieces of cargo and they've, they've actually stayed um, together quite well. I, don't, I guess that's not terribly surprising because once I separated the cargo, there aren't any kind of collisions or anything, so they're not bouncing into each other and changing their orbits, um, which I think probably would happen in the real world, but uh, at least in this version of Orbiter, there's no collision detection. So if I hit F1, I can actually kind of get inside of one of these just to sort of see, you know, what their orbits look like. So you can see here from the, now I can't change anything. I can't kill the, kill the rotation. I can't do anything because there's no fuel in these things. They're just dead weight on a trajectory. But according to Orbit MFD, the trajectory of this container is, uh, it, it's currently at 851 uh, meters, uh, kilometers rather, and it's going to have a periapsis of 42. One thing I can do is check on map MFD, turn display lines to orbit plane, track the location, zoom in a bit, and you can kind of see, yeah. So my, my, my stated goal was to dump the cargo off the coast of Florida, and that's not going to be, I mean, it's, it's, we'll, we'll see where it ends up longitudinally, if that's such a word. I knew though that my latitude was low, and I'll have to just maybe uh, fly the mission again to try to work that out. But I, kn I knew the latitude was lower than I wanted it to be, so we'll see what happens. Uh, before I get any farther along, though, let me control F3 to get back over to the shuttle A. Because I'm um, coming up on periapsis here in 500 seconds. So I am going to require an orbit insert burn for the shuttle A so that it doesn't get, um, so that it doesn't get too screwed up. But let me check one thing here. So that's 525 seconds. I just want to see which ones, which ones do for periapsis first. So that's 525, 426. Okay. So the containers are going to hit first. So I think I can probably track those. But let me, let me get started on the setup for, 
for the orbit insert here. So I'm going to go an Interplanetarium FD has a really good orbit insert program. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it, but what I find works the best is to bring up uh, the menu, go to, um, I think it's course. Now I got to back out of this. So I'm going to change the burn vector back to this page. Now I'm going to go page over so I got access to the previous and next. And I just have to get up here to delta velocity, then plus to get back out of it to get into this stuff. Now I want to go to orbit insert, so previous set and by default it's really set up you don't even have to you don't have to configure anything it will just do it uh, essentially it's saying that if if i engage the if i do the orbit insert program it's going to set the eccentricity to zero so my orbital altitude should be uh, basically whatever whatever my pea is my pea is 202 so my high point and low point should be about 202. If I wanted to, I could change and I could say, well, instead of going by eccentricity, I want to say set my set my orbit based on an apoapsis, and I could say give me an apoapsis of 500 or whatever. But I'm just going to say that eccentricity is fine and an ECC of 0.0, .0 is good. Now, the only thing I, the only thing I'm I have to, once I start this burn, I can't switch vessels. I don't think. I think it messes things up if I do. So, what I would like, I want to. So, in order to follow the, in order to follow this stuff, it's going to begin. It's going to hit the atmosphere at least in 400 seconds, roughly. And I need to begin this burn in 460 seconds. So let me do this. Let me page over, go to the burn vector, rotation, and let me get rotated into the position. get ready to do the burn here at least. Alright, I'll quickly check. Oh, I missed it. That sucks. Um, so, what's happening here? The drogue shoots are out and the stuff's on its way down. It will stabilize, believe it or not, even though it looks really crazy right now. Uh, the drogue shoots probably come out earlier than they should. But this stuff will stabilize. Let me check what's the altitude right now check on this all right I've still got 30 seconds before I gotta do the burn and once these reach another altitude point which I don't know what that altitude is but they will put out the main the main shoots you know what I can do I'm not gonna worry about the auto burn on the other one and then I want to look at map MFD here just to see exactly where these are ending up So my, my targeting was, you know, not bad. But again, I, I mean, I, I knew I was too far south. They're still at 4,000 meters a second. All right, let me switch back to here. Oops, I lost interplanetary MFD. And I need to begin the burn. So let's begin breaking. Past periapsis. No, I'm not quite past periapsis, so I need to be basically right at this point. I'll have to just manually go back and forth. Let me check on the cargo. So the drogue shoots, they're not out yet. I don't know what altitude. Maybe it's 20 kilometers or something, or maybe it, when, it, when it's reaches a certain velocity, because I doubt you'd want to put out a, the main shoot at, you know, double, triple, or quadruple supersonic speed. This does look kind of weird the way the graphics work, but but again, it will stabilize. It usually doesn't completely stabilize until it reaches about uh, you know not far above the surface. So we're slowing down. Now we're at two hundred meters a second. So probably any second now, the uh, the main shoots will come out. And remember, I've got the Shuttle A up in orbit right now doing its braking burn, <laughs> doing its orbit insert. I kind of need to check on that. 
but I kind of want to be able to see the uh, drogue shoots come out, or the main shoots. Uh, I gotta check, see how things are coming along here. Oops. Boy, did I catch that just in time. Okay, good, the main shoots haven't come out yet, so we'll get to see that. And the orbit insert's basically done. Look, didn't look to me like it was quite right, so I'll have to fix that orbit a little bit. So now we're down to 200 meters a second, 5 kilometers in altitude. See, these stayed together surprisingly well. I mean, that's six modules. One time when I did this, um, the modules, or the, the cargo, ended up getting spread out by... You whew, are cleared to land. There they are. The cargo was spread out over such a large distance. It wasn't... It was all within, you know, one or two degrees of latitude, longitude, but it, they certainly weren't this tightly packed. And as you can see, this wouldn't work in the real world. These would be getting all tangled up. But fortunately, there's no collision system. But yeah, you can see as the, as the drogue shoots come out and then the main shoots come out, the, the oscillating slows down and eventually kind of comes to a stop. Looks like that one's basically stopped. And there we are. Now these should have splashed down, but again, orbiter, what I like to say, for the water for orbiter, it's basically blue concrete, so it sounds like a it just sounds like a hard crash, but in theory these just splash down into the ocean and let's see where they are exactly. According to map MFD, they are, you know, that that targeting, I'm not I'm not displeased with that. All things considered. So I do think though that if my lap if my let's see. Yeah, if my latitude had been correct, I would have probably hit land, so that, to me, would have been a failure. So going back as far as I did, which was 86 west or something, I wouldn't need to go back that far. So again, Cape Canaveral is around 80 west. So I, I would, I, I don't think I would want to target 80, but going back as far as I did wouldn't be necessary. Maybe 82 or 83 would be fine. Then I would just have to work on the latitude. You know, because obviously that's pretty far off. Although we could fly an XR2 down here, and it would only take about 12 minutes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that. All right, let me uh, control F3 back over to up here and see what's going on. All right, yeah, our orbit's not bad. I was a little worried that my one of my PA or APA would be way off, but no, that's not bad at all. I'll take that. So we change the display lines over to orbit plane. And I think I'm going to go ahead and call that the end of the video. Um, the mission does call for a return trip to the moon, but I've gone back and forth between the Earth and the moon so many times I don't really feel the need to do that. But let me check burn time calculator to see... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, let me see how much fuel we have just to make sure we would have enough to get back, but that's just an obscene amount of fuel, 45 uh, kilometers or 45,000 meters a second that's more than the standard delta glider has and you can take the standard delta glider back and forth between the moon a couple of times without ever refueling so yeah fuel is not a concern here it would be very very easy I mean we could take this thing to Pluto now if we wanted to so yeah I'm not gonna if if the fuel had been like questionable I'd be very tempted to take it back to the moon just to see if I could do it but with this much fuel to, to spare, it's there's no question. This is so easy to get this back to the moon. So go ahead and end the video. And if you liked the mission, please hit the like button. And if you didn't like it, that's okay too. Hit the don't like button. And if you want to try this mission out for yourself, uh, check it out. Again, it's the default scenario that comes with Orbiter 2010. It's the Shuttle A folder, and it's called Shuttle A on the Moon. Uh, follow along with the video, see what you can do. Maybe you can work out the targeting a little bit better than I did, and let me know how far off you were when your cargo touched. Let me uh, control F3 to get over to the map again so you can take one final look at it and track it, zoom in. So my cargo is at 82.45 west and 17.70 north. And what I really wanted to have was basically, I wanted to have it, actually my longitude, yeah, no, that is a bit off. Um, I want to have my longitude basically 80 degrees or 79.5, something like that. That would have been ideal. And then the latitude should have been, you know, closer to 28 and something like that. So if you do the mission and you get those numbers, uh, let me know, I'd be curious. Especially if you can record it, that'd be fantastic. So, 
uh, check for links, and I will see you in the next mission.